You are very welcome to the show this morning, Minister. Thank you so much. One thing that caught an awful lot of people's attention was in relation to secondary schools. And this was uh, providing funding to extend the free school book scheme to junior cycle students. So, of course, you had done that in primary schools. But there's a lot of people getting in contact this morning, like Sarah, on the school book allowance for the junior cycle secondary school students. Will this cover tablets? Lots of schools don't even use the books anymore because it seems a bit mad. You've got the tablets, you've got the books, but you need the code to use the tablets for the right thing. And environmentally, it seems bad. What's going on with that situation? Yeah, um, thank you very much for having me this morning. I'm delighted to be here and have the opportunity to chat with you about the budget. Could I just say at the outset, I'm very conscious of what's happening, you know, on the other side of the world. And I know it's leading the news as well again this morning and just of the course, yeah. horrific trauma that's been inflicted on, on families and um, older people, children, yeah. um, men and women. It, it, it is nothing short of horrific. And I think all of us, I think, in whatever capacity we're working today and in the next number of days, we want to send our solidarity mm -hmm. and we're really, really calling and asking for a cessation of violence on both sides and really asking people to consider the humanity. And we'll be talking to the to say, that about that in the next that, And I just wanted to yeah. say that at the outset. In terms of the school books, I want to say you're quite correct. Um, this is this year we're seeing for the very first time in a landmark move, we're seeing free primary school books and resources uh, for, for children at primary school. And so the next step was to ensure that we could bring that into post-primary. So we will, for the first time now, ensure that there are free books and also classroom resources. So that means... But you have to buy the tablet. Yeah, no, uh, if, I, if I could just finish. So there will be free books and classroom resources. So that will be the textbooks and it will also be the dictionaries, the calculators, so on and so forth. We know all of our schools utilise books. That's, that's a given. Some of our schools absolutely do utilise the tablets. Uh, it's not, we're not in a position to do absolutely everything. So we have begun with the books. Uh, and I think that's an important, like that's a, you know, for, for parents who are sitting at home today, and I know there's lots of mums and dads watching the programme, I can now say to them, when you look at this budget in terms of your families, if you have children that are uh, attending childcare, there's a 50% reduction there in costs. If they're going to primary school, there's free books. If they're going to post-primary school, there are, as we've said now, the free books yeah. and classroom resources. And I can also say there's an extension of the hot school meals. I can say that there has been all, if you have children taking exams, the fees for taking exams have been waived. Yes. So it's not possible to do everything, but I think mum and dad need to know this is what is being done. It's been a cumulative step one after another. And, you know, and, we have listen, I think the feedback from a lot of parents has been very positive in that, yeah, that indeed. the school books is a, a welcome step forward. Yeah. Some of our question, why not go all the way? But that's maybe Again, for I'd next year. To, now, yeah, you have, it is the question of resources. And, we've and taken we, we, we will get to that. Primary, um, you've also, junior cycle. Uh, committed to 744 teaching posts, mm -hmm. 1,200 SNL posts. Mm -hmm. We have a message for Louise going, where the hell are you going to get them from? Like, where are they come from? And then, I mean, this is the other thing, because we discuss this a lot. We talk mm -hmm. about schools and teachers a lot here. Yeah. Teachers are leaving in their droves. They yeah. can't afford to live in this country, particularly a lot of them are in part-time roles. And yeah. I, even Fola said, like, will these positions, so these 744 teaching positions, these 1,200 SNA posts, mm -hmm. will they be full-time positions? Because it's not possible to survive on part-time positions here, particularly well, in cities. Well, again, just to say to you, and, and it is factually correct to say that we've never had as many teachers in the system, nor indeed SNAs in the system. So, for example, but in terms I will, of... But our class sizes sure are going through the roof. We need well, the teachers. Well, again, just in relation to the class sizes, uh, three budgets... But even though, sorry, just start with the teachers. Where are we going to get them yeah, from? So if I, uh, yeah, so just to give everything in its widest context, we've never had as many teachers and SNAs in the system, and you've specifically referenced special education and what we're going to do there. For the first First time ever, we have more than 42,000 professionals working in the in the area of special education. We will, at the end of this year, have almost 3,000 uh, special education classes. We've 130 special schools. Know, and again, just in terms of the teachers, just to be clear as to how we're we're supporting teachers. Um, there are a number of measures in the um, uh, in, in the budget. Uh, one of them is around the area of um, upskilling, where the department provides free of charge uh, upskilling for for uh, teachers. I attended UL. Oh, sorry, if, no, if I could Minister, just finish now, just this additional is... posts. These are Indeed. additional posts. Yes. You're talking about upskilling. We're not talking about that. We're talking about yeah. where are these new teachers going to come and, from? And I'm going to tell you. 
Um, so last year we had three and a half thousand uh, additional teachers come into the system in terms of newly qualified teachers, uh, in terms of supports for teachers, because you have referenced that teachers are choosing to leave. That's actually not true in many respects, insofar as having the largest contingent of teachers that we've ever had. But we have we've also, also got an increased population, the largest uh, in, population in, we have, in, we indeed, have had but since so the famine. For example, if you want to look at, uh, for example, special ed, we have um, seven new um, um, special schools in the last three years. And that was the first time in 20 years we've had new special schools. But just in terms of the teachers and keeping them in the system. And I recognise one of the greatest challenges for the, for the teachers is actually the cost of courses like the postgraduate in teaching. OK, so I'm introducing for the first time a 2000 euro support, yeah. uh, which uh, the student teachers will receive, the PME students will receive on completion of PME. Now, that's never before been done. It's been done now. And as I've said, we are um, providing for upskilling that. courses. I for still don't are understand where these teachers are coming. Because where? a number are going because on career breaks as well. So an awful lot of the teachers that are coming into the system are filling these career breaks. So they're not getting full time permanent positions. And they're going, well, I'm going to well, go away. Now. Again, again, to be fully accurate in that, where there are full time permanent positions, um, they're being provided for. Um, and we, we do have a pathway in terms of uh, permanency in our schools where after um, the first two years, once they begin their third year, there is a permanent contract. And then in other instances, there may well be a permanent contract available immediately. So there is a very clear pathway in terms of permanency. We do have a sufficiency of teachers coming out. Um, I will absolutely accept that there are more challenges in some areas than in others in terms of costs for, for uh, young teachers starting out, particularly maybe in our cities. So we're looking, as I said, for the first time ever in terms of our PMEs, giving them support to the tune of 2,000 euro on completion of the PMEs. Me. Um, because it, just on that as well, like Ireland primary schools, the highest rate in Eurozones <clears throat> in terms of class to pupil ratio. So you're talking about the highest rate of, of teachers we've ever had. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not enough. It's not enough. And the what? fact that you're upscaling is great, but at the same time, we still don't have enough teachers in the system. And every principal we speak to says we can't fill the posts. And again, just to say to you in terms of the class sizes, uh, over every budget for the last three budgets, I have reduced the pupil teacher ratio. So, so what does it's that still mean? still the highest in but, the Eurozone. No, but can I, no, can I just say, what does that actually mean? That means for every 23 pupils in the system, there is one teacher. In our DESH schools, in, in some of our DESH schools, that means for every 17 pupils, there is one teacher. And in our special education uh, classes, where there are six pupils, there will be one teacher and there will be two SNAs. But what about and the I teachers? Say, what about the SNAs that are taken about and the special needs teachers yes. that are taken out of those classes to fill mainstream class roles because there is no subs available to do that when a teacher is out or a teacher is on career break? Because it does feel like an awful lot of the schools that we talk about are robbing Peter to pay Paul themselves to try to cover the amount of teachers that are needed in but the again, system. But again, just to say to you, we have at this point more than 22,000 SNAs in the system. We've never had that before. And I absolutely accept that we need more and more and more. Yeah. And we have grown them every single year. Last year, for the first time ever, it surpassed the 20,000 mark. Um, and we will continue to grow that. And we will continue to grow, as I said, the, the teachers that we have. Like, for example, and like you've made reference to the fact that, you know, teachers are leaving. I think it's interesting to note, even in terms of the CAO, we have seen almost a 14% increase in those who are applying for teaching. So because teaching it's a, it's remains... it's a transferable skill all over well, the well, world. I'm just saying teaching... But, but it is a transferable yeah. skill all over the world that people can go, right, you know what? I can head off and do a few grinds over in Australia and I'll make more than I can here. I can head off, I can go to Dubai, go tax-free so that I will be able to buy a house because they cannot afford to get houses here in this country or get mortgages but, on some of the salaries that we're but giving. But again, can I say to you, the challenges that we might face in some areas are not unique to the education sector. We're seeing them in other sectors as well. And in terms of, you've referenced housing here, and you know, significant efforts are being made around housing. We have, and it is correct to say at this point, more than 400 first-time buyers a week are buying their first we're, home. We're getting away we from education. We're getting away no, from No, but you just referenced can that housing just, is, a, is an I, issue. So I'm saying can I just five, ask billion, you one five billion a year is now being put into housing supports and housing developments. So again, you know, it's, we do it's see that. tackling what the issues. What percentage of the GDP is spent on education? Well, we have the third highest budget in across all departments, which is 10.5 billion Actually, euro. Ireland is in the bottom third of all Eurozone, Eurozone countries, according to the OECD, on We're in the last potential, place of 36 countries. On the money that is spent in the education. So this goes down to the education of the government relying on parents, 
and contributions on principals having to do whatever they can on, on teachers to try and provide this high level. So, I mean, for a country that is awash with money at the moment, to think that we're one of the lowest that puts that money into education. That's quite well, a Well, just on, on, ju just on that point, uh, Tommy, like there are other experts who would view a different management for that or a different view of that, but notwithstanding that. Well, it is in 3%, terms of, isn't but, uh, it? It's no, 3% but I'm, of the GDP. But I'm just saying, in terms of the money that's available to us across all departments, we are the third highest spending department at 10.5 billion euro. I just want to acknowledge that. But, I mean, and in that, terms of the pressures that have been put on schools in but terms of spending... that's putting money on the parents. And we're hearing all the time about voluntary contributions that are paying for teachers. Well, We've the National Prin Principals Forum say they don't think they'll be able to run through winter. They won't be able to and keep I'm, their schools I'm very heaters. pleased that you've, you've raised that point because I can actually say to you that in the budget, we have made an additional allocation of 81 million euro for schools. And if I could just explain how that works, because I think your viewers would be interested. For every child that's in a school, there is a capitation or there's a yep. support grant paid. So we have secured now an 81 million addition to what they would normally get. And that means 21 million of it is a permanent measure. Is which that is on the top schools... of the 90 million last year or is that down from 90 million last the year? The 90 million last year was a once off. So it's um, down. It's 81 if, this year. Could, again, if I could explain it. The 90 million last year was a once off. The circumstances last year were very different to this year. Inflation was running at almost 10%. It's at 5% now. Energy costs were higher than they are this year, but notwithstanding, they're still higher than what they were pre-COVID. So we are introducing an additional 81 million in terms of capitation. 21% of it is actually um, is, is a permanent measure and uh, so schools will have that going forward. And so, for example, a child presently, that's bringing up the capitation at primary from 200 euro, so to 200 euro plus 49 euro. And it's bringing up the capitation at post-primary uh, from 345 um, with an additional 85 euro. So this is a significant uplift up for our schools. And if mm. there is an issue with schools, we do have a financial service support within the department. We'd be asking schools to, you know, uh, deal directly with the department. There is no compulsion on a parent to pay a voluntary contribution. Well, that, that is voluntary, but of course, uh, we're not doing that. Voluntary uh, and listen, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you on all of this. Lots of issues discussed there. 0896 111 111. Uh, Minister Norma Foley, thank you. Pleasure. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much, much. Thank you for having so much, Minister.